Oftentimes, you might have a list of companies who you work with, and then separately a list of contacts and the information that you can use to reach them, like their phone number. But if you were to look at a traditional spreadsheet, these two can't connect. What we'll do is we'll first connect the company table over here with the company column here, and then we'll find all the contacts that are related back to that company. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll format this column as a lookup table. And then the table that we want to look at is companies. So perfect, it's already sitting there. And you'll see this list here matches this list over here. If we were to put another company in the company name, it would then show up here. So now let's start assigning some people to different companies. And then next, to find the contacts that are related back to these companies, we'll use the lookup formula. So if I press equals, lookup, I'm going to first look for the table, which is contacts, then the column that I'm looking for, the column is the company column, and what does it match? Well, it matches this row or the company name here. So now you'll see the contacts show up here. The reason I'm able to reference this row and the reason that these show up here in the company list is because the company name is the display column. If I were to change the display column to something like this, it would be kind of confusing, but you would then select the contacts instead of the company name. All right, perfect. And then let's say if I were to give each of them a phone number, how could I eventually see that here? Well, each of these rows are actually like little company pages. So if I were to go into that, you would be able to see the contacts and then all the information that are related against them here in this subtable. If I want to edit what fields show up from the contacts table on the company, I can do so here. For teams planning OKRs, oftentimes it's really high-level OKRs that they're planning, but rarely are they connecting those to the work that needs to be done for the development and the product teams and the projects or so the epics and stories that they end up delivering on. So what we'll do in this case is we're going to tie these key results to projects that we're working on. So let's say that we had a big objective like world peace, a key result might be less war. and All right, perfect. And then like the CRM example, we will look up from the OKR table, which will then give us a list of all the key results. Again, the reason that these are showing up is because it's the display column right here. Now we can have the different project name Uh, start and due date eventually if we were managing these. And lastly, if we wanted to see all the projects that were related to these key results, we would look up using the lookup formula. We're looking at the projects table. Perfect. The column is the key results. And the key results we want it to match this row's display or the key results here. All right, perfect. All those are coming in. Now, it's a little bit awkward because everything's running in the list. Maybe I want to bullet point it, so I can select the bullet list formula, which will then give me each of these projects. Now, if I was on an OKR dashboard and I wasn't seeing the projects, I can easily pull up those projects here. In this example, we have a projects list and then a task list that goes against the project list. So here we have all the tasks that we're doing. To get a list of the projects, we would format a column as a lookup from table and select the table that we're looking at, the projects list. Now because the project name is the display column, 
Now we can select whatever project these tasks are for. Put due dates for everything so we can visualize how we're tracking. And then for statuses, everything will be pending right now. So here in the task list, we can use the lookup formula like we did before. We're looking at the tasks table. The column is the project. And it relates back to this row. Perfect. Now to get the total tasks, we can basically do the same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this lookup equals lookup. And instead of giving me the task name, I want to count the amount of tasks that are related to each project. So I'll do, instead of dot bulleted list, I'll do dot count. One task for the Team Sandstorm project, three tasks, develop QA kickoff, develop QA kickoff for the Wind Washington. Now if I wanted to find the completed task, I'm going to do a slightly different way to look up. I'm going to use the filter. So I'm going to look at the task table. At any time you can type the table and it will give you everything that you want to see on that table. I'm then going to look for the tasks that are related back to the project, kind of similar to the lookup that I was doing before. So the project here is going to equal project here, you'll see this is actually the exact same way. So the lookup formula here is the exact same thing as this filter. And I want to count, which basically is the same way to get the count here. Now the reason I did filter is it allows me to filter on multiple conditions. In the total task example, I'm just looking for the project. In this one, I'm actually looking for any of them with the status that equal complete. I'm going to look at completed tasks. So we can see that one task was completed for Win Washington, and as the team updates, goes through active to complete, we can see that completed task move up. And oftentimes I would want to track on percent complete. So I'll hit equals again. And I want to take completed tasks and then divide it by total number of tasks to give me a percent. So completed tasks divided by total tasks will give me a percent. So as I'm moving through and completing everything, the project here updates. When marketing teams are looking at the content that they're producing and when they want to promote them, oftentimes those are two very different activities. What I want to show you is how we can connect a marketing calendar with the content that we're producing. So here we have a marketing calendar with different post dates that we want to publish our content. And here in the content, we want to reference all the content that we're writing. So maybe we're putting together information about here's in France, some uh, URL that's tied back to the content. And I'm going to put some keywords that we're trying to promote for. Here in this content, what I'll do is I'll create a lookup. And what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the content table to find information about it. Because the display name is the content name, what will come through here on our content calendar is the different content that we're seeing here. Maybe I want to publish hands-on tourism twice. And then possibly you would have a different channel for distribution. So here, hands-on tourism is going to be an email as well as a, um, well, maybe not a YouTube piece, but uh, a social media piece, most likely on Facebook. Now, what we can also do is because we have content, and as I hover over, you'll actually see all the metadata coming off of this table, I can reference it in this table. So for example, if I wanted to pull the URL from the content table into here so I can easily access it on the marketing calendar, I can either do content and then see what's referenced over here when I click new. 
you'll see that URL coming in. Or what I can do is I can reference the content and then look for the URL. So I'll, I'll do that here for the next one. So if I wanted to get the keywords from the content, I'll go equals. I'm looking for the content and then dot. I'm looking for the keywords. Now those pull in the keywords here. And maybe I want to make it a bulleted list. So that's how we can co start combining the content with the marketing calendar. The marketing calendar most likely isn't a spreadsheet. It looks more like a calendar. So we can see that here in this view of the different pieces coming through. And maybe post date isn't the correct thing to display. So I'll change it to the actual content that's going live. Perfect. 